but I've been working on it since I was 18 years old. Um, so publishing process has um, took me for the longest many months. Um, this is some of the sound projects that I came up with. Uh, hello. So um, in my in my cookbook, um, which is a healthy vegan cookbook. Hopefully will be available in several months, but I said that several months ago, so <laughs> maybe um, it's on the back uh, table somewhere. So one of the things in the cookbook that I did was to create uh, smoothies for uh, a smoothie for every day. So I have uh, 31 smoothie recipes, I believe, um, and I really like um, not just regular smoothies, but kind of fancy. Um, you know, breakfast smoothies that taste like dessert. Uh, so something, I have a sweet tooth, you know, I like to be able to take something, you know, for breakfast to drink that, you know, change it up a little bit, add a couple of more flavors to it, and you can make, you know, a fruit smoothie taste like a carrot cake smoothie. Uh, so um, one, of the, one of the last uh, smoothie recipes that I came up with when writing the cookbook was a peanut butter cookie recipe. And I seem to remember that, um, you know, from having had the Girl Scout peanut butter cookies, that that was awfully close. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, huh, wouldn't it be fun to try and take all 10 Girl Scout cookie recipes and try and make smoothies, uh, try, and, try and write recipes that use uh, whole food, unprocessed ingredients, uh, that are healthy, but actually taste sort of like Girl Scout cookies. So um, I have, I'm almost finished at this point. I'm gonna uh, make a little uh, mini book, a little, um, publish a little mini book on my own when it's all done, but um, it's still gonna be another couple of months probably until that's ready. But these are four of the 10 recipes here. Um, so basically the, the DNA of these recipes is um, <coughs> it's using a combination of water, um, different nuts, um, fruit, and when I say fruit, I mean um, fruits that are the right color, uh, usually frozen, and um, mild. So um, I'm using fruit and I'm using different uh, flavor extracts and uh, different flavorings here. So basically the idea is to make a smoothie that uh, is pretty neutral in terms of like the different fruit and the vegetables that I use. So, you know, some uh, mangoes, some uh, sweet potatoes, some bananas, you know, things like that, that, you know, when they're frozen, they're cooked, they're frozen, and then when you put them in a blender and make a smoothie out of them, they don't really have a strong taste. So that's when you can add different flavor extracts to really make the smoothie taste like what you're actually going for. So. Uh, we'll do these four today, and we'll be handing out samples uh, so everybody can try them. Uh, this is a Vitamix. Uh, you don't need to have a Vitamix to make these recipes, but I highly recommend it. This is a very high power blender. Um, it's pretty expensive. You know, if you bought it new, it would be around $450, $500. Uh, you can get them used. You can buy, uh, there's copies of Vitamix that you can find for about 100 bucks online, uh, new. Uh, they're just not gonna last for 20 years like, like this one's going to, at least. Um, so, and you can also use some, like a, a mid-level blender, like a, um, like a Ninja or something like that. Um, just some of these ingredients, like the nuts, the dates, you have to soak those ahead of time um, because otherwise um, a Ninja is not gonna be strong enough to handle that, so. Um, that and get started. I'm on TV tonight, so I have to make sure that I'm following all of the health rules. All right. So the first, one of my favorites, thin mint smoothie. Uh, I'm going to give the disclaimer that, um, you know, unlike the smoothie recipes from the cookbook that are supposed to be, uh, you know, five, 10 minutes to make something fast in the morning, 
these are special. These smoothies, they taste, they take a little bit longer. You know, trying to make something healthy taste like a thin mint, it's not a fast process. <laughs> so, um, you know, there are going to be some things here that I'm going to, you know, we'll go through and I'll tell you, um, you know, you require a little bit of planning ahead of time, you know, some cooking, freezing, and then have it on hand available for whenever you need it. Just, you know, it's not like you come home with a bag of groceries and you can make this in two minutes. So, uh, Also, there are going to be some specialty ingredients uh, that we're going to use tonight. Some of the flavoring uh, extracts and, you know, flavor products. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, where you can get all those and everything. But uh, like I said, these are these are kind of a special uh, occasion kind of thing. I don't make these for breakfast every day. It's a little too much work for that. So, uh, Thin Mint Smoothie. All right. So, the Quick Oats and the Almonds. Bulk almonds, bulk nuts. I always get these at the Indian supermarket in uh, uh, Route 9 in Shrewsbury, uh, Patel Brothers. They sell bulk nuts for a lot cheaper than you get it in the small containers at the regular store. So, quarter of a cup. If you have an allergy to nuts, you are in the wrong room. <laughs> so you can use, um, if you have a nut allergy, you could use uh, oats uh, and uh, like coconut and everything, uh, like in some of the other recipes. So um, it's not going to come out quite the same, but it is an alternative. One thing that's a little different with these recipes that, um, you know, from the usual smoothies that I make is usually, you know, I'll, I'll tell people to blend the ingredients for, you know, a minute or two, you know, just to kind of get the nuts all blended up. With, with these recipes, you have to blend it for several minutes. You really have to let it go for a while. Um, just to basically, you know, if you put, um, if you put almonds or cashews or something like that in a food processor and you run it for a while, then it's going to break it down into much smaller pieces. If you keep running it, then eventually it's going to turn into almond butter or you know, coconut butter or you know, whatever it is that you're going to make. So this is doing the same thing just with water, it's liquefying it, but if you just let it run, just keep it going for a little while, it will break down the nuts even further into almost like a liquid almond butter. Basically. So this is water from my house. I'm always scared of what's in the tap here. So. Let's see. I add some of the we're gonna blend this for several minutes here.
let's see, we're gonna add in frozen banana. So bananas and mangoes both have the same kind of effect in a smoothie. Uh, they make it creamy. So uh, you can add either one um, if you don't like. They're both pretty mild. Um, with a half of a frozen banana, you're not gonna taste it. If you add more than that, hey there. Hi. The uh, recipes are in the back there. If you add more than a half of a frozen banana, it is gonna start to taste a little bit like banana. So if you don't like that, you could just use mango instead. So what I'll do is I'll buy bunches of bananas, um, wait until there's, uh, they're yellow with the brown spots on them, uh, uh, and then break them in half, peel them, break them in half, and then freeze them. All right. So we're going to use fresh mint in this. Uh, I don't even bother with the stems. The Vitamix will blend it up, no problem. Uh, I might cut off just the bottoms of them. Six medjool dates. So this is what makes it really sweet. Um, so all of the Girl Scout cookie smoothie recipes that I have um, call for more dates than the rest of the smoothies because they're a little extra sweet, and also it calls for more salt than the than the other cookie or the other smoothie recipes that I make um, because cookies are supposed to be a mix of sweet and salt. So those. And uh, so these are, the dates are a, a whole food uh, source of sugar. So instead of adding anything else that's not going to have any nutritional value, it's going to really sp uh, spike your blood sugar, then the dates um, do that naturally. But they also have a lot of fiber. So as you're drinking it, the fiber kind of slows down the absorption of the sugar in your system, so you don't get the sugar spikes. Um, there's the medjool dates, which are these ones here. They're a little bit larger, they have the pits in them, so you have to take the pits out. Um, and so like, again, Patel Brothers and Shrewsbury, I get the giant box of them here. All right, uh, gonna use cacao powder, which is what chocolate is made out of um, before they add the sugar and the fat to it. So this is the natural it's basically cocoa powder, same kind of thing, except this is raw. Right? Oh, that would be my phone. <laughs> so it turns out that cacao powder, cocoa powder, is actually very healthy for you. It has a lot of antioxidants, a lot of health properties. It's just when you add all of the fat and the sugar that it becomes not quite as healthy for you. So. That, uh, let's see, tablespoon of flax seeds. So again, if you have a powerful blender like a Vitamix, you don't need to use ground flax seeds. You can just add them right in and the uh, Vitamix will take care of it for you. And seeds, generally seeds are a real powerhouse of nutrition. Uh, lots of, uh, lots of great stuff. And these, so I always try to add either hemp seeds or some uh, flax seeds into different smoothies that I make. All right, teaspoon of peppermint extract. Let's see, that's a half. This helps to give it a very strong peppermint flavor. Espresso powder. So this one is one that you would probably have to order online. It's kind of hard to find in stores, but espresso powder is just ground espresso beans, mm -hmm. and that gives uh, that basically enriches the chocolate flavor of you know whatever you're putting it in. This is like a kind of a baker's secret. Um, you put it in small amounts, like a quarter of a teaspoon, um, then you're not going to taste it. It just makes the chocolate richer. Half a teaspoon of salt. So, like I said, normally in the recipes that I have in the cookbook, I don't use this much salt. 
or use any salt in most of my smoothies, but um, in this specific case to try and make them taste more like cookies than add it in. I don't eat a lot of processed foods. Most of what I eat is like this, whole food, unprocessed ingredients. So most of the sugar that, or most of the salt that we get in our diet is from eating processed foods. So for me, you know, putting some into something like this, I'm not really too worried about that. And again, this is just kind of a special, special occasion. Anyway. All right, so I'll blend this a few more minutes here. This is an experiment tonight, so I'm definitely going to sample everything first. I just got to wait a minute. Right. Yep. Yeah. That'll work. Yay. You can also use, um, uh, I have different um, flavorings here. You can buy chocolate flavoring as well. Um, that just gives the chocolate a little bit more of a punch. You can also... Um, if you wanted to, you could add um, graham crackers, you know, buy a couple, um, get a couple of pieces of graham cracker and crush it up and then mix it into here. Uh, that also, I've done that to kind of give it more of a cookie, you know, kind of flavor, but you get more into processed ingredients at that point. So, you know, it's up to you. So I'm going to pour here. So I'll say it with this one too, if you don't really like mint, then <laughs> this is not the smoothie for you. And it does not taste exactly like thin mint, you know, it's not like you're going to um, have this and then never have thin mint ever again. It's, you know, the idea is to go, go with the basic flavors and try to recreate those in a healthy way. You have some uh, some cookies like the the trefoil, which is the uh, strawberry or the uh, shortbread cookies. You know, try try to make a healthy whole food ingredients taste like shortbread. Yeah. Not so easy. My boys have been the uh, the chief taste testers for me here, so everything at least gets the the boys seal of approval. You see, you're gonna make it. Me. One more. Yes. Okay. Mine, I put my fingers. <laughs>
Thank you. Is your lid clean? Yep, that's good. Mm. Nice and strong. All right. So next recipe we're gonna do is the dosi dos. As I say, dosi don'ts. So if you read the ingredients of the actual cookie, then well, I probably shouldn't say this on broadcast television, but these are healthier ingredients than what is in the actual cookies. So one word about the flavorings here. So some of these you can find like, you know, peppermint extract, you can get those any supermarket, you know, vanilla, piece of cake, you can always find that. Uh, lemon extract, I got that at Living Earth, but you can find it at a lot of supermarkets. Um, some of these are uh, a little harder to find though. So like some of these I ordered online. Um, there's a company called uh, Loran Oils uh, that they make um, flavoring agents. Um, and so uh, they're like, there's the butter flavoring that is vegan. Um, I have the caramel flavor. Um, as peanut butter flavor. So things like the the caramel or the butter, you know, there really is no uh, there is no ingredient that I can use that's going to taste like caramel. There just isn't, you know. I mean, as far as I've seen, uh, you know, dates, you make caramel sauce with dates, but, you know, to make it strong enough, thank you, that it actually tastes like what I'm going for, um, I do use the flavoring uh, oils here. So these ones, you go online onto Loran Oils or go on eBay, uh, Amazon, they sell all these. So I really try to eat as whole food unprocessed as possible. So you'll see that, you know, something like this, I'm using an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, you know, certainly almost, you know, almost everything, you know, 99.5% of what I'm putting in here is all whole food ingredient. If I can add, you know, just a little bit of flavoring uh, in order to make something super healthy taste like a cookie, um, I'm okay with that. You know, if you really want to be a purist, you don't want to use anything that is, um, you know, something like um, butter flavoring, then, you know, some of the things like uh, the Thin Mint Smoothie, you know, you probably don't need that. Um, or like the peanut butter flavoring, it just, a lot of these in a lot of these recipes, it's just making it stronger. It's just boosting that flavor that you really want to boost. Um, there are some things like the caramel flavoring. Like I said, uh, I don't know of any way that you can really do that using Whole Foods to get that same flavor. So uh, I add a little bit in. All right, so this one we're gonna use roasted unsalted peanuts as the nuts. Um, and this one you really do have to blend for several minutes um, in order to get the, the right taste. If you don't blend it long enough, it's gonna kinda taste raw. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend using raw peanuts for this specific recipe um, because it just, it doesn't taste like peanut butter, it just tastes like raw peanuts. As always in my classes, as a guy, multitasking is very difficult. So, uh, you know, if you see, if you're following along with me with the recipe and you see something that I'm doing wrong, you know, please don't hesitate, yell at me. It's fine. Do you have a question? Can you use peanut butter instead of peanuts? You can. Does it have the same taste? I know the texture probably would be the same. But yeah, um, again, you know, just trying to go with being as whole food as, as possible, that's really what I was going with. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, to, unless you buy the specifically, um, you know, pure peanut butter, then sugar and salt and all kinds of other stuff added to it. So I'm really trying to go for the, the bare bones ingredient here. All right, let's cook oats. You could also use uh, rolled oats for this in a blender. It's not really going to make that much of a difference, especially if you're blending it a lot like we're doing today. And then two cups of water. 
You'll notice in my recipes that uh, for smoothies that it kind of follows along the same um, proportions. So two cups of water and uh, about a third of a cup of nuts or you know quarter cup nuts, quarter cup of the uh, quick oats. How many regular servings would these smoothies be? Uh, for me or for normal people? <laughs> so this, um, one of these recipes is going to make about a quart of smoothie. Um, so sometimes what I'll do is I'll just, um, you know, pour it into the quart, take it with me, drink half of it, um, you know, to start my day, and then save the other half for halfway through the, through the morning, just for more, more of a boost. Um, or I will um, pour it into pint jars, pint mason jars, and I'll take one with me and then just store the other one in the freezer. Uh, you can double batch all of these and you know just store all of the extra that you're not drinking and uh, freeze is perfectly fine, no problem. All right, we're gonna blend this one for several minutes too. thing that you'll notice in the different smoothies that I make is that I really try to write in for the recipe about uh, one and a half to, uh, to two cups of fruit and vegetables in every smoothie that I make. Um, the, I think the USDA recommendation for, for fruit and vegetables is four to five servings a day. Um, in the smoothies, uh, generally, it ends up being about uh, three or four servings. So right off the bat, you got that. All right, so half of a frozen banana. So in a recipe like this one, I found that um, have, putting in a whole banana, whole frozen banana, makes it the banana flavor is too strong. So I use some of each. For a lot of fruit, I like to just buy the frozen fruit, like this is from Trader Joe's frozen mango chunks. You know, I just pull it out of the freezer anytime I need it, so that's really for, a, for the convenience of it. Right. Cooked and frozen sweet potatoes. So, sweet potatoes are um, it's one of the healthiest vegetables that you can have. Um, it's loaded with nutrition. Uh, and so I'll cook them and um, break them, or cut them into cubes and uh, cook them and then freeze them. Um, if you freeze them in smaller bags, you don't have this chunk of sweet potato like I have to break apart here. But sweet potato is another thing that you can put into a smoothie that um, it doesn't really have a very strong taste, um, but it adds a lot of nutrition to it. So, and in the do -si don't smoothie, then um, the color is, adds really well. So. Uh, 
Also frozen uh, cooked carrots, very similar. And that, that's very mild. You don't, you know, if you only put in like half of a cup, then you're not really gonna taste it in there. But it just sneaks in a little bit more nutrition. All right, six medjool dates. This one. Oh, uh, they would turn it green. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, don't, don't want to do that. In, in a smoothie, like in a green smoothie, yeah. you know, where that's, that's fine? Sure, absolutely. Even the avocado would turn green. Yep. I thought that was because Yeah, so we got a tablespoon of the flax seeds. And like I said, you know, you could use like hemp seeds too, um, chia seeds, it's about... For color. For yeah, color. mostly for color. Yep. Okay. Avocados are also kind of a pain in the neck. Okay. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I, I use them a lot. I, 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 you know, I certainly use them a lot. But in terms of like, you know, having it for a smoothie, then, you know, you got to time it right and it doesn't really freeze well. So, you know, I typically, for smoothies, I typically like to use things that can freeze so that I can just, you know, prepare it, save it, and then just use it for when I'm making a smoothie. Okay. All right, a teaspoon of vanilla. And you won't forget the dates, will you? What's that? You won't forget putting the dates in there, right? No, I did that. You did it. Oh, good. Thank you. This is the uh, real salt that uh, I got this at Living Earth. <coughs> uh, this is a salt that's mined from an ancient salt bed in the Midwest. Um, so it's, and it has extra minerals in it and it's supposed to be healthier, but uh, I buy a big bag of it. It takes months to go through it, so do that. Uh, so now we're gonna add the butter flavor and the peanut butter flavor. My, my special one eighth teaspoon that I bought just for this. <laughs> so you don't want to put in too much of this, or then it kind of makes your mouth go numb. So. Oh. What's that? Mm -hmm. How'd you figure it out? Did you make your mouth go numb? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was adding just a couple of drops at a time and didn't really didn't make much of a difference in taste. And then I put in like a quarter of a teaspoon and yeah, okay.
So you can add more water if you want it to be a thinner consistency. Uh, I, this is the way that I like it, but see, yeah, oh yeah, that's thick. First time I made this, I'm like, what? This is too good. <laughs> Yeah, I'll hand that out. <laughs> All My master plan with these, with this little mini book is, uh, I was planning on when the, when the book is finished, my plan is to um, write to Vitamix, uh, write to Loran Oils, and also write to the Girl Scouts and say, hey, let's partner up, let's promote this stuff together. Not really. Uh, on Facebook, I have a Facebook page, uh, Colin Cooks Vegan. Okay. And uh, so I have recipes on there. Um, I found out that um, uh, when I was when I was writing the cookbook, I was posting recipes all the time. And then I found out that when you post them online before it's published and it's copyrighted, then oh. it's public domain and you can't copyright it. So yeah, I, I stopped that right away. Yeah. Uh, how many more do we? Nine more? Yeah. Wow. Does that look like that looks like children? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couple of months, but then I said that a couple months ago. I know, I so. remember you saying that, my daughter's like, when is it, when did you say it was going to be a couple months? Yeah. It's being edited right now, and it's just a really long process, unfortunately. How many more do I need to do here? Um, three. Okay. So we'll do an informal poll at the end of the class, as always. <laughs> what people like the most. Thank you. And then that should be it. All right. Did I get everybody? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we're good. Okay. <laughs> like my kitchen, making a big mess here. It's great. Thank you. Uh, I did get harassed by my boys a little bit. You know, they tried some of these and they're like, it's, you know, it's not exactly like a peanut butter cookie. Like, all right, it's close. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> So there are uh, eight flavors of Girl Scout cookies. Um, and then there's two extras. There's two different, uh, in my extensive research I found out, there are um, two different bakers that make Girl Scout cookies. 
And um, the ones that uh, are sold around here, there's eight flavors, but then the other baker makes two other flavors that the other one doesn't. Um, so I went for all 10. Um, so this one is gonna be the uh, Samoas. And um, this one, I'll just tell you, um, you know, I'm trying to hit the same flavors, uh, you know, uh, caramel, uh, chocolate, and uh, coconut are the main flavors of Samoa cookies. Um, really hard to do that in a healthy way and have it come out exactly, but this is in the realm anyway. I'm rooting for you, Colin. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Appreciate the confidence. There. <laughs> So, toasted coconut shreds. Uh, I just put some uh, coconut shreds in a on a um, frying pan skillet, and just keep stirring it until they start to turn golden brown. And then you can keep them like this for a long time, like in a container on the shelf or something. So, I'm gonna do a third. And so this is basically the same as adding nuts. Uh, you know, same idea. And just to try and boost the coconut flavor a little bit, um, using coconut water instead of regular water. Uh, and again, like you can get this and just keep it on the shelf for months. Until you open it, then you have to use it within a week. And this is just the water that comes out of a coconut. Um, you know, you could just use a fresh coconut and use, use that. But. All right, so. potato and because this is going to be kind of a orange brown smoothie then fits right in this. one um, with all of the mango and the sweet potato uh, it's a little bit sweeter um, so I cut back on the dates but you know there's really nothing in here except not too much of that because then you won't be able to talk it'll make your mouth numb <laughs> um, there's hey there's really um, you know all of the proportions for these ingredients you can kind of play with a little bit if you like a particular thing of it that it's a little bit stronger use less or more you know whatever you want so uh, got the dates, 
more cacao powder. Gives it the chocolate kind of flavor. And again, you can just use uh, cocoa powder. It's just cocoa powder is just a cooked form of this. All right, some flax seeds. And again, like I don't even measure this because you can't put too many of these in. Well, I suppose you could, but you know, mm -hmm. it'd be a really thick smoothie if you did. Mm -hmm. All right, two teaspoons of vanilla. So I've discovered through trial and error that a lot of vanilla is really good for the flavor for this particular recipe. Uh, espresso powder. So I've said this, I always say this in my classes, the Vitamix is very powerful, but you do have to take out the pits. It will just turn these pits into baby pits. It will not blend them. So caramel flavor. These flavor extracts, the Loran oils, these are usually more for uh, making candies. This one's pretty thick, and again, you can just thin it out if you want. Just add some more water. I don't really like it. Let's see. This one I made much, so. Mm. Pretty good. Still a work in progress. All right. So this has got the coconut flavor, some chocolate flavor, some caramel flavor.
taxis. Last one we're gonna go with here. We have the lemon lemon cookie smoothie. And let's see. While she's doing that one. Oh, look at that. Thank you. Probably add breakfast. What's that? What a great way to have breakfast. Mm. Yeah, I mean, before, before I was um, trying, you know, before I dropped out a lot of the processed foods, then I was having cereal and granola for breakfast a lot. And I mean, come on, you usually get like the, th you know, two or three cereals as like the main ones you usually have. So kind of gets boring mm -hmm. after a while. To me, it did. And then, you know, to be able to have a different smoothie every day of the month, I really enjoy it. And it's nice and portable for me, too. I'm on the road every day, so I need to have something that I can just, you know, pour into a jar and go. Cashews, like I said, Patel Brothers, big bags. All right, third of a cup. Fine planer. Uh, it's an easy way to zest uh, things like lemons and limes, things like that. The thing with a zester like this is, you only want to get the outer the outer layer. Um, you don't want to dig too much into where it's really white underneath because that's really bitter. There we go. And as always, my PSA. This doesn't know the difference between your fingers on the lemon, so <laughs> this will zest your fingers just as easily, which is not fun.
So I call this a serving of, uh, this is a serving of fruit also, as lemon is a fruit. And I'm just trying to get most of the larger seeds out of here as they're kind of bitter. But the little small ones, doesn't matter. Vitamix will take care of those. Oh. All right, half of a frozen banana. So again, this was a recipe where I found that putting in a whole banana by itself just as it comes out tasting too much like banana, which is really a distraction in this recipe. You want really the only thing that you're tasting here is lemon, uh, the vanilla, um, to give it the kind of a cookie flavor and sweetness. So let's see, half a cup. And we'll use hemp seeds for this one. So I just get these from Trader Joe's. Um, but you can get them from Living Earth or, you know, wherever you go. A lot of places have them now. All right. And then you got the six dates for sweetener. Uh, let's see. It's going to be half a teaspoon of lemon extract. Wait. I'm going to put in the turmeric first. So turmeric is for color, but also for added nutrition. Half a teaspoon of the lemon. Half a teaspoon of salt. And wash that off. So where's your partner in crime tonight? Come by yourself? He didn't plan to go to the you're a very good husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I, you use, can you use the Quaker oats? Does it matter? Nope. No, that's fine. The same thing. We just we recognized you on live TV with a town as being a great I husband. Alright, so let's see. One teaspoon of vanilla. And then eighth of a teaspoon of oil flavoring. Oh, the butter flavoring. Get the right one here.
but before I get famous with the Girl Scouts and, you know, all Vitamix and everybody, I'm on TV, then there we go. You see the, you saw it here, you tasted it here first. Yep. Right. I'm not getting anywhere with the Girl Scouts, though. I'm a guy, they're not going to want to talk to me. This one I had to work on a lot before I got a recipe that I was happy with. Okay, time for the unofficial poll. Oh, that's it. That's right. Well, we came out of the pack today, I think. Oh, all right. Lemons yeah. number one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lemon one. That lemon will pass for Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> lemon loaf also. Excellent. All right. Not that I've ever had it, but I have a recipe to make it. I have a recipe to make it too, but this is healthy. It tastes just like it. Yeah, I made that once, like the healthy version at home, but still, I mean, it's got a lot of uh, like butter and sugar in it. You know, a couple of years ago, I made it, and then, you know, I didn't, I had it sitting in my fridge, and, you know, my boys are only with me half the time, so, like, I made it right after they were there, and then I had the thing sitting in my fridge for days before they finally got there. Oh, disaster. Disaster. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So, how many times do you go through it? Do you get it right three times? Cleaning up, doing it again? Um, three or four times? How many times? Yeah, at least that. Wow. Yeah. Um, you know, this one I, I had to make a whole bunch of times before I got to this point. So, what did you do? Say, oh, I need six dates instead of five. I mean, did you get down to that level? Yeah. Um, if you do like four dates on this, then um, it's not sweet enough and it's just too sour. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I just kind of played with the ingredients. And, you know, I, I have the recipes all written down at home. And then, you know, every time I make it, then I try, you know, different yeah. couple things. And then I would make notes each time to, you know, say, you know, what what worked and what didn't. Uh, so if you saw, this is the much cleaner version. If you yeah. saw what my recipes at home look like, they got chicken scratch all over it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So does anybody have any questions? I do. Um, I like to make um, a strawberry, blueberry, banana smoothie. Mm -hmm. Kids love it. But I have to sweeten it up a little bit. And I always use like an apple juice base. What do you recommend I use instead of that to make it a little bit not as sugary and it just needs a little bit of oomph to it you know what I'm yeah saying? i'd go with the dates for sure dates would be good, yep. yeah if and you then just water or like a coconut water base um and something like that just water would be fine water okay yep um so if you don't have a, a really powerful blender then you would want to soak the dates ahead of time a couple of hours um if you didn't if you didn't plan that far ahead then you could um you know, put them in boiling water, and that you know for about 15 minutes that would soften them up, and then a regular blender would be able to. It would blend them. It's not going to come out, you know, 
completely creamy like in a Vitamix, but it would work. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. She has to take out the pit. No. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You can, so these are the medjool dates. Um, they're, so you either find the medjool dates or the uh, deglet noir dates. So like if you were to go to Market 32 right now in town, then you'd find the deglet uh, noir dates. And so those are already pitted, but they're drier and they're smaller than these. Um, so if you get the medjool dates, then they tend to be, um, you know, moister inside and uh, they're larger, so these are the ones that I prefer. And I can get these, like, like I said, at uh, Patel Brothers. I get them in bulk. So, you know, I make smoothies all the time. So, you know, this will this will last me for a couple of weeks, something like that. Colin, have you ever heard of the date people online? The date people? Yeah, they're, they're, they're in California, I think. My friend ordered a bunch of different kinds. They have, like, 10 or one different kind oh. of date. Nice. Order it by pounds. Yeah. She got like eleven pounds, three different kinds for like wow. seventy bucks. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. I I try. I mean, aside from things like this, specialty things that you really have to order, I really do try to base the recipes that I write off of things that, yeah, that you can get that you don't have to special order too much of this stuff. Um, you know, something like this, um, especially. Like this size, this is um, uh, this is a four ounce. Um, if you buy this as a four ounce, then I think it's like fifteen bucks. It's expensive, but I mean it lasts a really long time. I'm only using an eighth of a teaspoon at a time, so you know you can buy the little um, dram size, the one ounce, um, for a couple of bucks. But you know for something like the butter flavoring, uh, I use it in all these different smoothies, so I buy the larger size of it. Yep, so I have a question. So, yeah, I just have a question about, um, with the espresso powder, you said it, it is hard to find in stores. Mm -hmm. So is there any sort of like substitution I could do that would be a little bit easier to find, anything like that? Um, you don't have to use it. It's okay. not essential. Um, okay. It just enriches the chocolate flavor a little bit. Um, but like I got this, I think I, I think this was on uh, Amazon, you know, it's like six bucks or something. So, um, you know, it's, you can't go to a store and buy it, but you know, the major places like Amazon have it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Where do you find this knockoff Vitamix that you speak of? <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you go on eBay, um, oh shoot, the, th the thing is you want to look up, like look up what the specs are for a Vitamix in terms of the horsepower and then use those specs to look up, because um, there's a couple of different ones. Um, they're going to look really similar um, and they will have the same specs as a Vitamix. It's just, you know, the materials are cheaper. It's not going to last a really long time, but, you know, um, I would, you know, ver that versus a, like a Ninja or something are, is going to be the same cost. Right. And I'd go with that knockoff Vitamix every time. Okay. Um, just because, you know, I know it's not going to last a long time, but, you know, I'm, I'm so used to using a Vitamix and like, you know, the consistency th that you get from using a really high power blender than everything else is just kind of a... Yeah, you've convinced me. <laughs> yeah, you can you can get them used also. Um, you know they last the original Vitamix. You know they last a really long time. So, you know you can go on eBay on Craigslist. You can get them for a couple hundred bucks there. Um, I saw one on Craigslist um, just recently that was like two hundred bucks and barely used. So, you know I always say. You know, I, I have a kitchen full of different appliances and a lot of them I don't really use that much, but you know, if you're really trying to eat healthy and you want to invest some money, then absolutely, you know, a Vitamix or like the knockoff would be, you know, absolutely the, the first thing that I would buy. You know, you can get the Instant Pot and that's great. The, um, the uh, pressure cooker, you know, uh, the multi pressure cooker. Uh, you can get the uh, air fryer, you know, that's that's great too. I like using that. Um, but, 
you know, Vitamix I use multiple times every day. I really think they should pay you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll definitely be throwing that in when I contact them about the Girl Scout cookie book. Yeah. Yeah. Just to say, you know, I always talk about you guys. Yeah. So throw me, throw me an extra one sometime. <laughs> Uh, any other questions? Yeah. H have you convinced your um, publicist to call the book Colin Cook Vegan yet? No. No. That that's a that ship has sailed. That is a done deal. So healthy vegan cookbook is what it is. Actually, I got the draft of um, from the publisher. From they had a professional editor go through and like red marker everything, and uh, oh, <laughs> I was terrified, but. Um, she she actually suggested changing the name of the cookbook, and like I've already, I already had to change it from what I wanted to what the publisher wanted, and then she wanted to change it also, so I wrote back to the publisher and I said I'm gonna have a small ulcer at this point if you make me change it again because, you know I've said now like on TV and, you know I went on, um, I did a, a cooking show. Um, for the uh, Supreme Master uh, Ching oh, Hai nice. uh, group in Worcester, but it's an international program. Yeah. So they like translate it into 15 different languages. It's nice. crazy. Yeah. And you know, so like I said it on there, you know, it's about to broadcast internationally. You know, don't make me change it again. Um, but yeah, the, um, the mini book I'm gonna publish myself. Uh, I asked the publisher and they said, we don't even know what to do with something like that. So I said, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll publish it myself. That one I can do. So. All right, any other questions? All right, we even skated in right under the 8 o'clock <laughs> time limit. Now. Right. Thank, you. thank you. And thank you for everyone who is helping. <laughs> Betsy, <laughs> Eunice, thank you. Let us know when you have the book signed. You're going to have a line, I have a feeling. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll go rinse this one more time so you don't have to bring it home. Yes, ma'am. Oopie. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Hold on. That's all right. <laughs> Good job. All right. Is there you. anything else coming up? Yeah. What's up? Uh, Honestly, I... I